What's going on guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Today is Friday, February 8th, 2019. Anybody new to these videos, I really appreciate you tuning in. I hope you guys enjoy what you see here. We're going to do a full dive into the Forex markets, going over all the individual currency indexes. We'll go over the euro, the dollar, the pound, the yen, the Swiss, the Aussie, the New Zealand, um, the CAD. We will go over all the US dollar major crosses, and I will dive into my watch list, the personal trades I am watching to take for myself this coming week. I also go over what happened in the past week, go over the top performing currencies versus the bottom performing currencies to try to catch what's going to be underperforming or overperforming in the week ahead, as well as a little bit of the news and what's been going on around the world to affect these current currency markets. All right, guys, I appreciate it. All my returning viewers, love you guys as always. Everybody, if you don't mind, smash the thumbs up button below. Throw me a comment. Let me know you like or don't like what you're seeing, something I can do differently, something you want me to cover for you, um, or just stop by to say hello. Really do means a lot, guys. Uh, subscribe to the page. You'll be notified every time I upload a new video, every time I do these videos every week. Thank you, guys. Love you all, and let's dive into the charts. All right, so starting off with what was the top performing and underperforming pairs of the week. As you can see, bit of a risk-off feel this week. We had some strengthening in the dollar, yen, Swiss franc. And we had a complete sell-off in the Aussie New Zealand and slightly into the CAD Euro pound. Really, this, this weighted performance is all pinned up against the US dollar, as you can see with this here. So um, obviously, if the dollar is the top performer of the week, everything else will be in the negative. But you can see these were the top performers. These were the bottom performers. The New Zealand and Aussie both moved lower over 2% this week. That's a pretty decent, strong move in the core currency markets. So we can look to be piggybacking that weakness into the next week. Or we can maybe look for a little bit of a recovery before the weakness continues the following week. Either way, we like to back check out this performance, follow these trends, and try to catch the momentum of what is top performing and what is underperforming. Starting off here with this Dixie US dollar index. This shows the overall performance of the US dollar. As you guys can see, price has been pretty choppy um, for really the last few months. We haven't had too clear of a trend. You know, this is a trending market. This is the kind of moves we want to see. Bottom left, top right, that's a trending market. Here we are seeing pretty much left to right, straight across the board. We have had a little bit of up, a little bit of down. But as you can see, we have most recently been range bound here, right? Between around 96.50 to around 95. In this range, we've been swinging back and forth. We've got a W pattern here, but um, again, just range bound, nothing too convincing for me here. We did break up above this 50 day SMA. We are finding resistance around this 96.50 ish level. Looking left, you can see this is a very significant zone. So if we do see the dollar break and close up above here, that is a very bullish sign for us. However, we could see this resistance hold once again and price roll over. We had this um, bearish crossover here where the 20 crossed below the 50. And now the 20 is curling back up to cross back above it, but this could roll over and continue back to the downside. If this resistance holds, so we'll have to see. We're at a critical level here with the dollar. We'll have to see next week where it wants to go. Euro as well is in an ugly range bound market. As you can see, drawing a rectangle sideways across the zone, we can trap price within it. And that is showing us that we do not have a strong trend. We have a range bound market. It's tough to be trend traders in a range bound market. Um, however, we did have a decent sell-off. We are seeing a crossover of the 20 below the 50. We could see price break this support at around 108. We will be keeping an eye on this for the euro. Uh, most recently did have a break below structure here with this lower low, immediately pulled back, but we did get a slightly lower high after this entire high was formed there, and price is continuing to sell off. So another one, we are approaching a very strong support level. Looking left, you can see how many times it's held. We'll have to wait and see if the euro is bouncing off this level or if we are able to break through it. Japanese yen made a parabolic move higher if we get mr leonard fibonacci out here we can pull it up to the top and see we're about at the 50 percent correction of this parabolic bullish move price went up and then zigzagged lower and now we are sitting on this support we're sitting on this 50 percent fib level we'll see if price holds you can see all week really we were flat with the yen right the yen just moved sideways all week long if we go to a lower time frame a little ugly looking but you can see um Price has just been moving sideways, really nothing going on. So uh, we'll have to wait and see if the yen shows us some clearer direction next week. British pound did sell off, started to sell off Monday into Tuesday, and then has been range bound since. We are at a higher low. We have been setting higher highs. We pulled back. We are setting a higher low. So we'll see. I am watching this four-day range that we're in right now as well with this pair. We are range bound. 
and we want to see um, if these four daily candles high or low is broken and see if price heads in that direction. Canadian dollar had a strong jobs report today. Not too much bullish price action, but it did have a nice pop immediately. Um, we are setting higher highs and higher lows. You can see this is another new higher low here. We are forming. We'll see if this trend continues and if this 50 SMA along with this structure to the left holds and price bounces off there to continue the uptrend. Swiss franc continues to dribble lower, broke out of this channel, set a new trend changing lower low, broke through the 50 SMA, 20 crossed below the 50, half pulled back, tapped the 50 SMA, threw in a shooting star slash doji candle, continues to sell off, got a nice lower low set down here. I think we do have some more steam to the downside. I think we have some nice room down to around 92.50 range down here before we get too big of a bounce, even though we are bouncing today on Friday's candle. Um, I think we will continue to move lower next week and we will be keeping an eye out for that. Aussie did get pretty crushed this week, as you can see with these strong moves lower. We're sitting on this support level here, prior structure, higher low. If we break this structure, that will be a new lower low. This will be a crossover. This is a, an ugly ribbon uh, pattern here. We've got the moving averages is crossing over on stop. Not a very nice trend on this pair as well. We have not been seeing very good trends in the currency markets lately. There's been a lot of volatility. There's been a lot of macroeconomic events going on, really throwing fundamentals into the mix. Um, however, this could send us a little lower low. We could have some push down to at least 70 down here. So we'll be keeping an eye on this bearishness continuing in the Aussie this week as well as in New Zealand. Looking at this weekly chart, you can see a nice double top formation, right? We had a little bit of a rejection bar off this 70 zone a few weeks ago. Price moved lower, found support, rallied back up to retest this level, and we're ending Friday with a strong bearish engulfing. I think we are likely to see this chart head lower, at least down to the 65 level. If we're able to break this level, we could see a nice sell-off continue to happen out of New Zealand dollar. That takes us over to the euro dollar, another ugly chart where we are just really uh, range bound still here. Nothing really nice going on with this pair. We can draw some trend lines in here. We can draw some channels. You could call this a bear flag if you want. Um, it is a pretty nice bear flag, but all in all, I mean, we have been chopping sideways for a long time. We typically don't like seeing patterns form this long. Um, taking it to the weekly chart, it does look like much nicer of a bear flag, right? But on the daily, it just looks like a choppy range bound market. So, um, I wouldn't sell again, sell into this strong of a move. I would look for more of a pullback or maybe consolidation above this support and then try to catch the break lower. But all in all, price action does have me looking to the downside. It's just a matter of where and when. And to me, it is when we break out of at least this range and this red support here to look for pullbacks for continuations. Pound dollar made a nice strong parabolic higher high, as you can see here, moved all the way up, hit this weekly uh, resistance pull back now hitting some support Thursday we had a nice spinning top candle here indecision candle balance between buyers and sellers buyers ended up closing higher on the day long rejection work to the downside uh, if we throw mr. Fibonacci out here I'm sure we will line up with something as well from the most recent move that's a 382 so we had a strong push higher strong trending markets typically have a smaller pullback pull back to 382 can look now for price to continue higher to the upside. This weekly resistance would be a nice area to aim for. Dollar Swiss franc broke, broke above a nice level here, looking left in an uptrend. We got higher highs forming with higher lows forming. We've got the moving averages finally in the correct order, 20 above the 50 above the 200. We are moving upwards now, getting a little bit of an evening star pattern formation here, a little bit of a bearish engulfing, but I think we could see a little bit of a pullback and then a continuation of this move to the upside. Dollar CAD, uh, another one, not the greatest chart, but we're setting lower low, lower high, lower low, pull back for a lower high, hitting this um, 50 SMA here. We projected off the 200 day SMA, popped higher, now hitting this. If you look left, this is a decent area as well of daily support and resistance. It was resistance, strong break, then support, strong break, resistance, temporarily broke above it and then immediately came back under. Now we're testing it again rejecting price. So my uh, ultimate reaction is that this is potentially moving lower, but another one that's not the cleanest and prettiest chart. Dollar yen. I was watching for this to move lower today. I would have liked to see this support break. Didn't see it. Didn't happen. As you can see, there's a lot of consolidation here. 
a lot of room to the downside if price is able to break out of here. So you can keep an eye on a trade like this. I have a much larger potential profit move. This was just a quick little intraday move. I was trying to get um, you know a quick little 30 pip or so drop in the yen this morning didn't end up consolidate and, and didn't end up coming to fruition. But we are on a really strong resistance. We are in a nice little correction pattern after a strong move lower. So we'll see if this resistance holds. If not, we could break and start to move higher. New Zealand dollar, US dollar, another one that's not the prettiest. If we go to the weekly, we can see that double top pattern we've got here, right? One, two, there's our engulfing. It's rejecting off the 200-day SMA and the 50-day SMA. I'm sure we got a Fibonacci level as well from this parabolic move lower. And we are in the 50% Fib. So this is a very strong sell-off point. On the daily, though, we can see pretty ugly price action. We are breaking through the 200-day SMA. We are testing a little bit of a daily trend line. We do have some support underneath. We are in a range-bound market, so I'm not running and jumping to any conclusions, but all in all, higher time frames telling me that this pair looks like it wants to move lower. Aussie dollar, US dollar, range-bound, another ugly pair. We were in a nice trend. Now we've just been range-bound. We had a very ugly flash crash, attempt to break lower, rejected, bounced immediately higher off that. Now we're selling off again, respect to the 200-day SMA. So... We'll just about keep an eye on this pair. Another one, the U.S. dollar crosses across the board. Aren't really too much uh, excitement lately. Pound dollar is the best looking of them all. Dollar yen, if we could see the break of that support, would look nice as well. But either way, we don't have too great of any setups in the dollar. So I'm going to dive into some of the other pairs I'm watching. So it's nothing in particular I'm watching, but if you see we have a nice, um, not trend as in uptrend or downtrend, but trend as in something similar across the board. We have all the yen pairs, as you guys can see, had some bearish sell-off this week that looked like they were downtrend deep pullbacks that could have been reversing trends, but it looks like the bears have stepped back into the market finally. So we have Aussie, New Zealand, Euro, Swiss franc, CAD, pound, all selling off this week. As you can see, it looks like some bears stepped back into the market. Looks like the yen pairs could be ready to move lower. That would mean a strong yen. I do like the weakness in the CAD yen, taking this down to the four hour. You can see a nice resistance, turn support, broken now resistance, nice trend line, broken, retested, moving average crossover. We do look like we could have some potential downside out of this pair off of this zone here in the coming week. Pound yen, I just showed you on the daily, has saw some bearishness. As you can see here, we are really moving lower on a strong support. As you can see, we've got uh, the top pressure closing in. This is a descending triangle. Typically, we look for this in a bear trend on support for a trend continuation pattern. However, we are seeing this right now on a nice strong support with price closing in. So a breakout is expected. Could be the upside, could be the downside. Either way, a breakout is likely to occur in the coming weeks on pound yen. We've got some really strong resistance being respected on Euro Aussie, as you can see, looking left. Very nice zone. We're getting a shooting star candle close here. Price looks very likely to reject off this resistance and head lower. As you guys can see, if we throw Fibonacci as well on this move from the high to we'll go down to this low, you can see we're at 382. Um, very strong level, not the best trending pair, not the best uh, overalls, but as well as strong support and resistance goes, price action, candlestick pattern, things of that nature, this is looking like it could set up for a nice short. Euro New Zealand has been setting lower lows, lower highs. Price has now retraced back to a decent support resistance level. Nothing crazy, but it's a decent zone. Looking left, you know, we got some uh, support and resistance areas. We have, um, you know, lower low made, double bottom bounce. Now retesting potentially lower high. We have a nice uh, double spinning top, tweezer top, whatever you want to call it. Double indecision candles here on this resistance. Could be move lower. We did break and close above the 50 SMA though, which has me wor worried. So we will need additional confirmation. We'll be looking on the lower time frames for price to break out of this range to the downside. We do see a nice zone here. Price will have to break through. But all in all, um, decent resistance. We could wait for next week to see if price holds. Pound Swiss franc is making a nice bullish uh, flag pattern here, as you guys can see. A little bit of a flag, a little bit of a wedge, whatever term you want to call it. It is a bullish move with a consolidation, looking for another bullish move off of it. Going down a time frame, you can see the pattern more, right? This nice flag pattern. So we'll be waiting for a break above this pattern, potentially a retest and move higher. We've got nice strong resistance levels 
up above where price is trading to look for. So uh, we definitely have some profit target regions. We definitely have some nice areas to look for. But um, all in all right now, we're looking for bullish bounces. We got a nice hammer candle here off the 200 day moving average. And we'll be looking for price to continue higher on this pair. Aussie CAD's broken a strong support, broken a strong trend line. Nice strategy I'm testing here. This morning worked out pretty nicely. Came up to retest this zone and then moved all the way down to our take profit on both entries. But we can see looking left, this is a nice strong zone. Price broke below it, retested it, and has now moved lower. I do think it has it in it to continue the bearish sell-off into next week. That would be riding off of this um, Aussie weakness that we're seeing from this prior week. Would like to see New Zealand CAD give us a setup like this. We uh, had a nice uptrend, then we reversed it, set a lower low here, double bottomed, came back up, respected prior structure, turned support, turned resistance, sold off back down to the bottom of the support at the prior lower low, which was our double bottom. Now we are stalling out on this level. As you can see, price tried to bounce off it and immediately sold off. So we will be keeping an eye on this. We would like to see this support get broken. Price pull back up, retest it, and then continue to the downside. And we've got New Zealand Swiss franc. Uh, potential long setup we'll be watching for next week. We did break a bit of a trend line here, but we're testing this strong support on the 50-day SMA. So the uptrend stays intact as well as we're above the 50 SMA. 20 is above the 50. We pushed higher, pulled back, could have a little bit of a trade here. If we throw Fibonacci out, this might be a 382, and it's a little below it. Coming down now closer to the 50. But either way, it's still in our golden zone. And we would like to look for a bounce off this zone. We'd like to see some bullish moves come into the market to give us confirmation. But all in all, we will be looking for this to gain some strength and reverse. Gold has broken out of this bullish pennant, made a push higher, and now pulled back again. Looks like it's making another push higher off of it. I was telling everybody to look for long opportunities when we were here off of this zone. It pushed a little higher before pulling back. Pulled back a little bit here, didn't quite come back to the zone, pushed higher. So we are been, we've been seeing by the dips working pretty well in gold. Even though it's not pulling back to the exact zones I have marked, it's still moving higher, pulling back, moving higher, pulling back, moving higher. So the bull market stays intact. S&P 500, you can see the correction it made today. I mean this week off of this 200-day uh, moving average. Price has continued rallying higher, hit this, and has now sold off this week. But we're seeing a bounce off the prior support, uh, resistance turn support from the um, highs of this last move before we pulled back. So we'll see if the S&P 500 has enough gas to continue higher. Or maybe we get a little bit of a deeper pullback here. But the trend has reversed back to an uptrend. We have the 20 above the 50, setting higher highs, higher lows, and price looks like it is moving back up. Last but not least, we have our oil chart. We have a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders. This right shoulder has been stalling out a bit. We are still respecting this $52, $50 a barrel here. Um, more along the lines of 52 sorry. $52 a barrel here is acting as this psychological support still. Price is pulled back to it now. We'll see if it is able to hold and bounce to the upside. Again, we have higher highs and higher lows being set. The 20s crossed above the 50 SMA. So this bearish sell-off has now reversed to what could be a strong bull comeback. We'll have to wait and see what gold does. This past week's news, we had some weak retail sales out of Australia. The RBA rate statement, which um, immediately whipsawed that and gave some temporary strength to it, then low immediately tanked it afterwards. Um, PMI numbers out of the U.S. missed expectations. Trump gave a State of the Union address this week. Uh, we had jobs data out of New Zealand, which missed expectations, continuing to fuel that lower. Bank of England, very, very doom and gloom outlook on the economy. Um, all kinds of future forecasts for 2019 have been lowered. They say Brexit is weighing on the economy and its growth big time. People are worried. People aren't spending money. People aren't doing things. Companies aren't hiring new employees, expanding into new territories because everybody's a little worried about the future of the United Kingdom as Brexit negotiations have been a total nightmare. So we'll have to stay tuned with Brexit. I would recommend staying away from trading the pound for a little while. It's beaten me up a little bit the last couple of months. I've put it on my do not trade list for a little bit. Uh, we'll still continue to analyze the pairs, continue to look for opportunities, but I will be backing off until this Brexit calms down a little bit till we hopefully solidify a plan, maybe get into a nice strong bull market. Maybe the UK sees some optimism come back, maybe see some spending, some growth, and things go back to normal, and they begin to boom again. And hopefully there is a nice bullish trend we could ride. Or maybe we have all plans fall apart, and we go into total chaos, and we see a sell-off, and we see a recession maybe come into the markets. I don't think it'll be that extreme, but we got to keep all odds on the table. Um, 
Afterwards, we had the monetary policy statement out of Australia. Continued selling off the pair. Strong jobs data out of Canada. The unemployment rate did tick slightly higher, but they created a ton more jobs than they expected in January. 66.8 thousand versus the expectation of six and a half thousand. They created 9.3 thousand in December. So this was a killer month for Canada. I think we will see this strength continue in the next week. So we'll have to wait and see, but that is where my opinion lies. Next week's news, as you guys can see, we start Monday pretty strong with GDP out of the pound, manufacturing production, preliminary GDP quarterly report. Um, then Bank of Carney speaks, I mean, Bank of England, Governor Carney speaks, New Zealand's rate statement, and then inflation and report and press conference. Pound has CPI, dollar has CPI, um, GDP out of J uh, Japan, trade balance out of China, preliminary GDPs out of Europe. Then we have retail sales, PPI out of the US dollar, and then retail sales out of pound. And can't forget this, sorry, uh, inflation data out of China. Not the biggest out of China. Everywhere else in the world, though, inflation data is watched heavily. So we have a loaded week next week. We have a high impact news event every single day of the week. Minus Sunday, that's the opening of the week. Don't recommend trading them anyways. But that just about does it, guys. For anybody who follows me here at CoreFX, we have a new website in the makings. Just want to give you guys a quick little inside look. We have a uh, new site coming, new content coming, updates to the course. Um, a lot of awesome, exciting stuff going on here at CoreFX. <laughs> This is a quick little sneak peek into the site. We got some really cool things going on. I've got a link to my YouTube channel, so all my new content will be coming out as I drop it right onto the site. We've got all kinds of free articles that we've got loaded up here on the site. We've got all kinds of stuff for our existing students. We've got a new members area for our subscription signal service followers. We got testimonials. We got it all. Outline on what the course entails and what will be covered in it. Everything is in here, so go ahead and um, not yet, actually. <laughs> Sorry, don't go ahead and do anything yet because it is still in the works. But this is what it is going to look like. Just want to give you guys a quick little look. It's on a test server right now until everything's done. Um, but this is what the site is going to look like. Got the nice um, feel to it. We got our, our price charts here on the chart. We got a nice Forex heat map, which I'll be showing you all how to use, showing what's top performing and underperforming. Um, but all in all, very excited for the new course to be launched. Very excited for the new site. And... Uh, I hope everybody as as excited as I am. I doubt it, but I still hope. So that about wraps up the video here, guys. I hope everybody enjoy this. I hope you guys get some value out of this. I've been doing a lot of back testing lately for anybody who follows me at all. Um, got a lot of new strategies in development. I'm more of a swing trader, but I'm trying to get more into the intraday, more into the um, you know different styles to add some more variety to my trading. Uh, I've been dabbling with futures as well, adding that to the intraday spectrum. Just trying to round off and diversify my trading a bit. But thank you guys. I hope everyone enjoys these videos. I hope you guys stay in touch with my content. Again, please throw a like button below. It means a lot. Uh, throw a comment below. It means even more. Love you guys. Have a great one.